What's going on traders? Welcome back to another video. Want to run through a weekend watch list with you guys really fast. We're going to take a look at maybe four stocks here uh, that you should keep on your watch list throughout next week that I believe could see some decent movements or at least have some decent formations. Now, there's plenty of other stocks out there in the market that I'm sure have other really good setups too uh, that I haven't seen. But out of the few that I was kind of looking at tonight, I believe that these are a couple good ones that we should be watching uh, going into next week. So let's get into it. All right, first one here is CCXI. Now, if you were trading around or had been watching the market over the past week or so, you would have probably seen the stock at some point moving. Uh, so we've had this really big jump up. We kind of had the pullback. We've been consolidating. And then on, uh, on Thursday of last week, we had a really strong bounce right back up and it's still kind of holding higher. So we're starting to create a little bit of a higher low. And it's very possible that we start to get over this candle and these candles here, and that can create a nice move back up to probably retest close to these highs or somewhere near the previous high on CCXI from 38.30, you know, maybe it's 36 to 34. Right now the price is about 31. So there's about a three, $4 potential move here on CCXI if it can get over. Uh, pretty much the price of 32. And now the reason I'd say consider trading this is because if this does break over 32 and push up, you actually have the potential to swing trade it because what it can do is pull back and form into a cup in handle formation and that would end up making you know like a bull flag pennant that might break that 38 mark. All right, so we've been having some decent moves in a lot of these stocks recently, so it's a, it's a very possible outcome we can see. Look at Thursday's trading session. I mean, look at how monstrous that move is. Moves don't happen like that unless a lot of people are buying or a lot of people, yeah, that's just it. A lot of people are buying up the stock. And if you look at that move, I mean, look at how aggressive and how strong it was going up. And then the following day thereafter, it holds pretty well. Now, some of you guys might not understand what I'm about to do. Some of you might, but I'm just going to throw a quick little fib here. And chances are it probably hung, yeah, pretty close. All right. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, but anyways, this is, a, this is a pretty bullish stock going into to next week. So I would keep it on watch for a potential long play. Again, only over 32, maybe 32.20, the candle here and this candle here. So again, it'd probably be a price of right at about... 32.20, 32.12 is where I'd be considering getting long over only if it gets over that price. All right, let's go into the next one. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, next one is KOD. Um, so I'm sure some of you guys have seen this stock over uh, the past couple days. All right, so just out of nowhere, kind of has this really crazy day, following day has another really good day, following day has another really good day, okay? So if we were to look at this maybe over the course of, we'll try and put on like a 10-day chart, all right? That, that's a little bit better. Let me take this off. All right, so we have this one day where we get this really monstrous move, and then of course it kind of crashes down, and the following day it bounces back up really nicely, and then it kind of comes back down, holds support, right? This is kind of the support area holds very well. Then we get a, a just a ginormous trending move all day here that gets us over just barely into a new high over this top. And then we pull back and we hold following day, pull back, but bounce all the way back up on the day. So we came all the way down to all the way back up. So now we've created this short term resistance at about a, this price here at 65. All right. So let me draw this a little differently. So now we got a kind of like a little resistance hold here at around 65. And if that price can get back over 65, then we should have a small push that maybe brings us back up towards these highs. And if it does that, there's a good chance we could see this breaking out over $74. Now take a step back. Let's look at what we really have. A big cup, the formation starting of a handle that might end up breaking out. And if you look up, again, cup and handle patterns, when they do truly work, uh, more oftentimes than not, they're going to lead to a, a nice breakout. So that's really cool. I really like the formation on this. We've been have, I've, I've had a price target of about 85 to $99 on this for the past couple, for pretty much the past week. And the reason being is it's all has to do with Fibonacci retracement. And, um, you know, 
end of the day, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, let's move up here. We're going to go down one. Bang, bang, choo choo try. There you go. You can see all these price levels kind of right here. This is kind of our target on the stock. So if the pattern forms right, you know, going into Monday morning tomorrow or Tuesday or at any point throughout the week, and it looks like we should be getting long on it, then we're going to do so. So this is kind of one of our stocks going forward this week. We're going to be keeping a close eye on with targets of about anywhere from 84 to um, 100 bucks. All right. Next one on the list is X, United U.S. Steel. Excuse me. Now, this stock we've been watching for a couple weeks now, and I finally believe we're getting close to the move that I've been looking for for, again, a couple weeks. All right, so if we look at the daily chart, there's a really nice kind of inverse head and shoulders bull flag formation here. All right, it's been pressing up on this resistance for quite some time. Right. We had a resistance mark. Excuse me, let me start here. We had some resistance at this top, right? Kind of in this area around 13 bucks. So we've just been kind of like going over, back under, over, back under, over, back under. And now we finally created a really nice curl up and over those levels. We're starting to close over those levels again, right? And then also pay attention to these candles here. Let me zoom in a bit. All right, look at these candles. Look at that candle. Look at the wick gets bought up nicely, right? Look at this candle, very nice wick getting bought up. Look at that candle, very nice wick getting bought up. Then let me delete all these drawings. Look at all those wicks getting bought up, creating a nice little uptrend there. And now we're starting to press on the very top resistance of this move. So there's a good chance next couple of days we might see, you know, even tomorrow we might see like maybe like a little hesitation day. Let me change that up a second. You know, maybe we get like a little pullback day here, a little hesitation days. That's a square. I didn't want a square one. That. <laughs> so again, as I was saying, little pullback days, maybe some kind of hold days. And if we can do something similar to this, and we get a green candle like that. That's not green. I thought I changed the color. There we go. If it's green like so, we might see ourselves with a nice kind of breaking out move like that. Um, we will have to potentially pay attention to this 200 moving average. Again, that can act as resistance. Uh, but ultimately, the formation is really nice here on X. Fairly cheap. It's about 13 14 bucks. It doesn't move extremely fast. If it is having a breakout day, it can move a little bit faster. So this does actually give us a decent move or a decent breakout. We could probably expect a price of 15 18 to $16 in the near term future, and maybe even over $16 if we can press up and hold again and get out like that. So there's a lot of a lot of potential here with X really do like it. Um, so we're going to be keeping that one on watch. And then lastly is PTI, which is a penny stock that over the past, let's just call it a month has performed extremely well, right? So if we look at this chart, from here, to here was what we call a gap fill, right? You can see there's a big dead space in my chart. If you look, there's no candle there, big dead space. That's called the gap. And then when the stock comes all the way back up and fills that move, we call that a gap fill trade. And then normally it runs into a pretty decent resistance right at the top, right? Where the gap would be totally filled. So again, let me rephrase this differently. All right, so stock goes down, creates this big gap, goes all the way down, 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 comes back up, starts to break over that candle, gets up and over, squeeze up. Now we're into the gap fill zone, all this big box area, squeezes all the way up to the top where another new candle's at, creates resistance. And that's where you're starting to see some sellers come in here. Uh, so what we're going to be following for the next couple of weeks is a short play, PTI is a shortable stock on thinkorswim most penny stocks are not shortable this one is so we're going to be looking to short it a lot of us now here's the thing considering it's easy to borrow and it is shortable you will come to find that more often times than not if the stock is easy to borrow and it's had a monstrous kind of move like this and let me rephrase that typically when a penny stock has a really monstrous move like we've seen pti do the stock will crash down easily Right, it'll go up and it will come down nearly as easy as it went up. But when they're a penny stock and they're easy to borrow, means regularly available to bet on the downside of the stock or short the stock, 
they normally don't go down as easy. They actually take a long, uh, you know, a pretty decent amount of time to go down, and they're just not easy going, not very fluent. Kind of kind of puts up a fight on the way down, and I come to notice that on all the easy to borrow penny stocks. But nonetheless, uh, I do believe we could be looking at um, a decent short play here to start sizing in slowly. So far, the formation is still bullish because we have this nice move. We're still getting bought up right now on these dips, right? We're not really selling in. So tomorrow, you might even expect to see a kind of a push or a pop on the stock. But ultimately, if it's not going to get back over $4.20, then we're going to remain, you know, mostly bearish on the stock. Short term, we could see some long plays, but ultimately, probably remain bearish on that stock. And that's all the stocks that will be putting on this watch list for tonight's video. So again, these are four different stocks you guys can keep an eye on throughout the week. And of course, always make sure to turn into our early morning streams where we go through a couple different stocks that are moving that day in the morning, you can be looking for day trades. So most of these stocks I was looking at, I'd be looking at, you know, kind of one day holds or two days or, you know, maybe a couple days for a swing trade. Uh, so ultimately, that's the watch is for you guys. And I hope you guys learned something new. And I hope you guys find some good value in some of these stocks throughout the next week. All right, guys, so everybody take care. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys come tomorrow morning.